All right, guys, uh, welcome back to The Pulse with Willie and Al, and we have a guest appearance today. Uh, we have someone new joining the podcast for today to uh, share with us some special stuff going on. So, uh, go ahead, introduce yourself. Well, I happen to be his father, although um, most of my friends will say that I must have adopted my kids because they're too good looking to be my kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this is coach myra this is my father but uh yep. we've talked about him a few times on the podcast but we're bringing him on today because yeah we have a yeah round of applause right That's we've right. got a great episode here today with episode 49 our just in time episode and uh we're we're back here this week we're going to be talking about uh the all-star game some second half looks some hall of fame inductees for baseball and then afterwards we're going to dive into some stuff with afc and nfc west um and the last season of training oh and we've got another guy here pablo. too pablo yeah so he has made his appearance the big great dane so um yeah let's uh it, it's going to be a loaded episode today so please uh, buckle up. It's going to fly by, and uh, we, we want to make sure you don't miss anything. So, starting off with Major League Baseball, of course, I, I skipped Al, right? Uh, how you doing today, bud? Uh, you know, pretty good. Uh, it's my last day before a little mini vacay. Yeah. Uh, I get to see one Shane Meyer tomorrow, going to Rhode Island for the weekend. Yeah. Woo! It's going to be a great really time. Excited. Really excited for that as well. So, plus... I Get to give my parents a break. All right, so starting off with Major League Baseball, we got the Hall of Fame inductions, and uh, Jim Leland was one of them, Adrian Beltre, Todd Helton, and Joe Maurer. Um, and I'm just, you know, I wanted to open up it up to you first, Al, and just ask, you know, is there anything that you, you want to say about any of them uh, going in? I know we've personally talked with trivia about Adrian Beltre, but uh, yeah. some of these other guys, anything you want to mention about them? Uh, Jim Leland, the last guy to, I think to smoke cigarettes in the dugout, way past when he was you're supposed to. You sure? Great it was old, cigarettes? Not alone. You yeah. sure? I think he yeah, had some happy weed. I think he might have as well. Uh, but also, uh, you know, Beltre, really great third baseman. He, uh, he played one year for the Red Sox in 2010, and I think about that year fondly just because he hit so many out of Fenway, which is bananas. Um, Helton career Colorado player like uh it's nice to see that the guys from the Rockies in the mid 90s or 2000s getting their recognition even though like they played in Colorado where the air's thinner uh and then Joe Maurer just uh hometown kid got drafted by hometown team at number one and made good on it and uh, you don't see that very often and especially one of the better catchers I've got to watch in my lifetime um yeah and just a really good hitter like for a catcher so okay and coach as you know you're a lifelong baseball fan and that's kind of you know you grew up watching baseball well, how do you feel about these four being inducted are, are you happy for any of them in particular or is there one that stands out to you that you really like or anything you want to share on on any four of them well i'm happy for all of them i mean by the time anybody gets inducted i'm i'm happy for them because um, you know, it's something, it's an accomplishment, you know, and people will debate whether they should be in or whether they shouldn't be in. Um, but, and for me, more importantly is thinking about, um, Jim Leland because he coached, managed the team that I follow mm -hmm. and, you know, I, you know, he, they give him a hard time because he didn't win any championships. Tigers could have won a couple championships in the years. I mean, they were, I still say they were the best team in baseball in 2013. But as you see year after year, the best team doesn't always win. For whatever reason, there is a thing that changes a series, a game, or whatever. Um, I, I just, it was exciting to watch Tigers baseball. <laughs> and in two, uh, 2006, they were too young. They had a week off. They they were riding high. They took a week off, and and the Cardinals, the Cardinals really were not better than the Tigers. But you know what? They won the World Series. So mm -hmm. that's it. Tigers didn't win it, but I was happy for all of them. Okay. Yeah that that 2013 Tigers team. I think about that team a lot because that team is loaded, uh, and we we just caught lightning in a bottle that year. And it, I think sometimes when winning a championship, like it's a lot of hard work, but there is a little bit of luck involved just a little bit. And like, 
Ortiz doesn't hit that. Hard. I think yeah. that series looks a lot different. And I, I think that you guys easily beat the Cardinals in 13. Like you guys were a buzzsaw that year. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, the one thing that I will say that hurt the Tigers in a number of those years that Dombrowski never got that shutdown relief pitcher after we had Zamaya, who was a shutdown guy, but he got hurt. After that, it was yeah. like, eh, we just, we didn't have, Willie Hernandez was not walking in that door. No. And so it, it was difficult. So, yeah. Oh, well. Well, I'm definitely excited to see some of them. Like Todd Helton, I, I probably remember the most um, out of these guys. Like Jim Leland, obviously, we grew up talking about him. But Todd Helton, just I, I think about guys that played for Colorado. And I don't know, there was a lot of good players through those years. Um, kind of shocked that he was the first one to get in. But maybe some of the others don't have the numbers to be able to do that. Uh, to, or to be able to beat them in there, but um, happy for all four of them. Uh, and uh, it, it's kind of a, a neat thing, you know. Every every year, is it the same thing in baseball? Five years, you got to be retired before you can be yeah. considered. Okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of. I think that's the crazy thing, growing up and realizing how many great players there are in the league, and then out of those great players, only a few of them end up making it to the Hall of Fame. So it's. I don't know. I'm, I was very fortunate. Some of my guys made it and very happy for that. But, well, you know, we'll we'll see who ends up making it next year. Well, uh, I, next year's each row. Uh, next year's row. Yes. I want to throw one plug in. I think, yep. and it's a shame that he's not in. Lou Whitaker. He should be in. Mm -hmm. I mean, he him, I'm, I'm hoping he gets in. Sometimes they vote him in and stuff. I guess he's had yeah. too many years out and stuff, but. You know, he's just, well, I'm hoping as a Tiger that he gets it. But anyway. Yeah, he has, his his numbers are comparable to a lot of guys that are already in the Hall of Fame. And it is, it's yeah. a shame because him and, him and Trammell were the reasons that that 84 Tigers team won, won it all. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, up next, we've got Home Run Derby, which is kind of interesting, a little bit different this year. And I just wanted to ask you, Al, like what your thoughts were on it. Like, were you excited to watch it? Because I, I know... I mean, football is my main thing that I that I like watching. I, I still have a, a deep appreciation for baseball, but I feel like even as they're talking in football about moving the Pro Bowl game to like during the season, kind of like how basketball does that, it doesn't excite me for that. And I'm wondering like with the changes that they've made to try to make it more attractive, if you think Home Run Derby or the All-Star game is, is something that you really enjoy watching now. Um, I have always had a real fondness for the All Star for All Star the the break. Um, I, I've always loved the game itself, um, and I've loved the home run derby for as long as I can remember. Um, but I think the thing that the derby is lacking right now, and you could kind of tell this year, like if you watch baseball most days, like you, you know who everybody is. But I am pretty convinced. 90% of people could not pick Teoscar Hernandez out of a lineup. I don't think they could. I don't think I could. I don't <laughs> think they could. Or I don't think anybody had heard of him until the home run derby. I, at least a good solid, like, the casual fan, I don't think would have known who he was. <laughs> um, and, I mean, like, you had stars in there like Gunnar Henderson, um, Pete Alonzo. Um, and I just – I think the thing that, like, it was kind of lacking this year was just that star power. I remember a couple of years ago, like when Shohei decided he was going to be in the Derby and like, that was just such a big deal. And like, everybody was like looking forward to that. And I, and it just felt like this year, there wasn't a lot to look forward to with that. Like, mm -hmm. I think to me, the only thing I was really rooting for was Pete Alonzo to win his third uh, to Ty Griffey. Yeah. Um, that was kind of my thing too. Like, I'm like, man, if he's coming back, I hope he does. But I felt like there was too many good young bucks that, you know, you, yeah. even you see Bobby Wood, junior like what he was able to do i mean it's just i don't know it's it's nice to be able to see that but um i don't know my father and i talked about it a little bit just and i don't want to speak for you but just uh that the all-star game used to mean a lot when these guys didn't play each other during the season yeah and you know i just if, do you want to expand on that are you talking about me yeah yo, I, we're talking oh, to okay. you we're okay, to I, just, I yeah. want to make sure he, he's over here singing. He wants to go out. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I I've lost. I I'm not as interested in the All Star game. I watch, but 
<laughs> but I'm not as interested in it anymore because it just it lacks the luster that it used to have. Mm-hmm. It used to be American League against the National League. It it isn't that way anymore because they play each other all the time. They everybody plays everyone else. I don't I don't care for the um, interleague play. There there are some good things about it. And there are some benefits for some people, but I don't like the interleague play. And I, I just I just think it waters down. And so the the all-star game has lost interest in terms it there's there's a less of a following of the, the all-star game. And it's I, I think that's part of it. The other thing mm-hmm. too is if you're gonna keep it the way it is, and that's fine, you know, I'm, I'm old, so change is, is is inevitable. But let them wear their uniform tops. I agree. Yeah, Let I wish they would do that. I too. agree. Man, it's like uh, that's what we used to love about that. And I, I think those are some good points that you bring up in terms of the uh, All Star Game being able to wear the uniforms. I feel like you wanted to say something on that, Al. Well, yeah, I just like I, my earliest memories of the, as a kid of the All Star Game is like everybody just wearing their own uniforms, which is like really cool and really neat. I, I, for one, I thought the all-star uniforms this year um, looks terrible. I, <laughs> I They looked terrible. And I like bright colored uniforms. I love those. I For me not to like that, that says something. Like, yeah. I just thought they were ugly. <laughs> you don't, you the, don't like them, them either? <laughs> all those damn City Connect uniforms. Yeah. They need to get rid of those things. It, it looks like they're out there playing softball. If mm-hmm. I want to see softball, I'll go down and, and watch it in Rutland. Yeah. I don't like, I like, I like seeing, I hate the Red Sox and I hate the Yankees, but you know what? There's something nostalgic about their uniforms. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to see yellow and pink and, and sky blue and this. Wear are your uniforms? Yeah. Shane, during baseball season, listens probably for a few hours every season on how much I hate the yellow uniforms. Yeah. God, I hate them so much. I, 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 I like, I'm irrationally mad about them. Like, I just don't like them. I understand what it means and what it represents, and I, and I love that. But, like, I just, every time I tune into a game and they're wearing the yellow unis, I just get so mad. Yeah. Just, it's... like, just irrationally angry. Or I think that they're the Pittsburgh Pirates. And like their throwback yeah. uniforms, right? Like every single time, but which was kind of a joke in itself until this year. But because uh, the the Pirates actually are starting to put stuff together. But uh, during the All Star Game, it seems like Jaron Duran steals the show, uh, which you got to be happy about. Um, Skeen shine, yeah. right? Uh, he he was just awesome, and Otani homers, which you know it. It's kind of nice to see that on on the grand stage and stuff. Uh, for you know the biggest stage for him to be able to do it next to the World Series. But uh, I think it's it's nice when you get the stars to show up and they really show out. And that's a yeah. really it, it's one thing to invite them to the All Star Game, but for them to actually play competitively is another thing. Like you know, and I, again, I don't want to make this about the NFL, but if you bring the Pro Bowl into the middle of the season. How many of those guys in the middle of the season are giving 110% in that game? None of them, right? Like, no. it's silly for them to do that for a throwaway game that doesn't really mean much. So, I don't know. I like the way baseball does it. Um, I, You know, I, I'm hoping they, they find those tweaks that, that really make it uh, very attractive for more audiences in the future. So, um, I, and I guess that's what I was going to ask is, is there anything that you would like to see them change in the future uh, that you think could add more flair to the all-star game besides the yellow uniforms? <laughs> uh, for me, I would love to – it's not even so much the all-star game, but I would like to make it a whole weekend. I, I What the – NBA? I really am a big fan of the NBA, and what they do well is all-star weekend. Like, they make it a weekend. Don't, like ma- – like, make the all-star game, like, on a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Or like, or on Sunday, or like Sunday night, and like have like what I really would like to see is a skills competition. Mm-hmm. Like and like, so they do this in Japan and Korea during their All Star breaks. They have like these skill competitions, and one of them is like is like bunting. And I know that's like really weird, and I know that's a very niche audience, 
aka me and about four other people that would enjoy that but like stuff like that just to change it up i think would be really cool i think he would yeah. too yeah I, yeah. I, yeah I love to see that um yeah, yeah i i just um i don't know i i just i would like to see him take a whole week off in the middle of the season it, it just and but in, in order to do that they they has to have to cut like eight games back to the 154 game schedule or if you're going to play the same amount of games, let's go have the double headers or start I was, earlier. I was telling you know? Shane the other day about how I used to go to double headers and they were real double headers, you know, one game you had a break in the little, a little break. And then you play lots the second game, no clearing out the stadium. You got two games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and that, that was fun. You know, I mean, I enjoyed that. So, yeah. There's a lot of things that they can do, but hopefully they're able to implement some some ideas to, again, make it more attractive, get a bigger audience, and kind of grow. Uh, because it, the more they grow that audience, the more they're going to grow that revenue. So, yeah. and <laughs> they love that revenue. So, uh, let's jump into second half looks, right? Because we're a little bit, now that we're past the All-Star break, it's a little more than halfway through the season. But, you know, as soon as we look now, the, you know, July's over. We're starting August this weekend, um, or rather next week, right? Next week, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm losing my mind here. But August is right around the corner here. Um, so I was just going to say, let's look at these division leaders that we've got. With with Baltimore, you know, the Yankees are right on their heels, and, like, your Red Sox are only a few games back. So uh, just curious, like, your thoughts on Baltimore and what you see happening in this division towards the end here. Do you, do you think your boys can overtake the Yankees? I... Here's the thing. I would love for that to happen. The Red Sox need an arm. They need one more really good quality starting pitcher, and they're, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. Tariq it's, I would – believe me, I would love that. I don't want to give up the farm for him, though. I would never talk to you again, ever. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I'm aware. I, uh, he wouldn't either. He'd be no, so I mad wouldn't. at you. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You know, it's like, what are you going to do? I mean, yeah. it's like. Uh, uh, no, but the, the Red Sox need an arm. Um, yeah. And I don't, I, I think ownership is too cheap. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're going to pull the trigger. And I think that this team constructed the way it is. Mm-hmm. I think they're scrappy. They play small ball. They steal a lot of bases. They weirdly hit a lot of triples, which isn't a thing anymore. Um, I, I think that they can contend for that wild card spot. I think that's well within their reach. Mm-hmm. Um, the Yankees are free falling. Uh, Minnesota is Minnesota. And like they're not, they're having a weird year where they're weirdly good. And I, I can't figure out why. Um, and it's the, it's the Royals. It's, it's the Sox. Like I, I think they, they could very easily get a wild card spot. Okay. In order Baltimore's the, too good, though. Yeah. In Baltimore's order, too good and too much talent. Yeah. In order for the Sox to get it, they're going to have to play really well because they have one of the toughest schedules remaining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like I just heard that today. I was listening on the baseball thing, and and I I knew that um, coming up. But uh, who knows? It, it it'll be exciting to the end and. Mm-hmm. It, you kind of saw that with that first opening series against the Dodgers, uh, where the Red Sox blew were in every game, but they just blew it at the end with the bullpen. And then the Sunday night game where Otani hits one out of Dodger Stadium, uh, <laughs> that I just I don't know where that ball landed, but I know it was outside of Dodger Stadium. Uh, and yeah, like it kind of really showed that like while we're a good team, we're, we're a level below like those top level, like the Dodgers, Baltimore, uh, you know, Philadelphia. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's okay. Cause we just need to get to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. The Tigers. You, you just need a chance at the playoffs. And yeah. You, anything can happen. You just got to get right. hot. And that's been the case of oh. the last year. Like look at the diamondbacks last year, they were able to sneak in and everyone overlooked them. And well, they Atlanta in 2021. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, you know, really good. And, I know you're going to be happy about this. The Astros, um, like they just, <laughs> they seem to be on fire, like really, really playing much better than they have in the past. And like, I think that's kind of a strange thing. All they had to do was just hang around in that division. You know, the Mariners have slowly been dropping more and more games 
And, you know, the, all of a sudden, uh, Texas isn't far behind either. So it's like... It's look, kinda... look, Shane, legally somebody has to win that division. Yeah, they do. They do. So. Um, oh. And they had the world champion last year. So Yeah, yeah. which is, is yeah, true. Well. And until you beat the world champs, right? Uh, yeah, but I, let, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was going to shift gears into the into the National League. Did you have something else you wanted to mention? Okay, Wait, so. Real quick, what do you want Detroit? What, what's the deal with Detroit? You know, I, Detroit I was people? hoping... I, they got to get to 500. If they get to 500 in the next week, it might get them motivated. I the the only chance they have is an outside shot as as, as a you know a, a playoff team. You know to get yeah. a wild card. But that the reality is, I'm I'm watching them like every time Shane comes home. They show some bright spots. They took two out of three from the Dodgers. They should have yeah. swept the Dodgers. Yeah. They, and then, you know. They're they, playing Cleveland tough or close. Yeah, they split with Cleveland here. They beat beat them three out of four last week. You know, it's like, but they pull defeat out of the jaws of victory so often. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, and it's one run games. You got to win those one run games. I yeah. think the thing is they've shown a lot and, and just – because I'm a fan of that, I'm talking. There's other really good teams out there, and you know, I I don't think they're one of the top six, not yet. But I I'll tell you what, watch their pitching staff. They got some good, good young arms. Yeah. A lot of them, unless they yeah. trade them. And if they trade them, I, I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it feels like for the first time Detroit really has some building blocks and real pieces they can build on build upon yeah and it's just a matter of ownership keeps them like yeah so yeah that's uh that's going to be interesting to see what happens and like you never know when you start to get when a team starts to gain confidence and gain momentum <coughs> it, they can really take off from there so um but talk about a team that's had momentum and just kept it this year uh in the national league the the phillies right um, you know, as I look the other day, they're, they're up a lot of games in, in the East over the Braves. But, um, I was going to ask you, like, what do they need to do, uh, to hang on and finish this out? Because it's always been that they've kind of gotten off to a slow start and had to like dig their way back into contention. And now it seems this year they came out, uh, with a vengeance and really crushed it at the beginning and, you know, have, have gone through from there. So wh what do you think needs to happen in order for, the Phillies to be able to continue going. Now, are you getting kidnapped? No, no. I uh, I thought my laptop was plugged in this entire time, and it wasn't. So it was getting mad at me that my laptop was going to die soon. Oh, Sorry yeah. about that. It's plugged in. We're good. Uh, yeah, no. Honestly, the Phillies can just kind of, like I said, I don't necessarily trust Jose Alvarado as a closer. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, the proof's kind of in the pudding with, uh, with the stats. Like he has a lot of saves, but it's kind of deceptive because he has an ERA of almost four. Um, so I'd really like to see them get another bullpen arm. But other than that, like that's all they really need. Yeah. Like they don't like they just need to like stay healthy. That's it. Yeah, the Braves are chugging along. I'm surprised they're still even. You know, like I figure they're probably going to win a wild card spot, but it. I'm just I'm looking mm -hmm. at it and I'm like, oh man, like it's tough to be down your top two guys right and still be chugging along but we'll see we'll see what ends up happening but what were you gonna say coach well the the phillies just gotta hope they don't have to play the oakland athletics because <laughs> the, the oakland athletics have their number yeah they they got smoked by them oh, last yeah. week well that that's was... not quite a smoking what happened with colorado there oh no all right it, it was that <laughs> shane <laughs> they got beat. The Phillies got beat eighteen to three well, by Oakland. Okay, you didn't so, see that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. it was like three touchdowns and a field goal. And the Red Sox were, you know, three touchdowns. Listen, touchdowns. when I'm going in at the throat for Al, don't tell me halfway through, no, it's not that it's not worth it. I just want to help you. I want you I'm to be already yeah, committed no. at that look, point. <laughs> look, I sat and watched them give up twenty yesterday to Colorado. I watched that. Wow. Yeah. You love self abuse. It. That's what it <laughs> yeah. is. You yeah. love self abuse. Were you crying? I, it's that's the thing with the Red Sox and I it's 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 a an unhealthy relationship that I can never get seem to get out of. Yeah. And I I I, 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 I blame my father. 
I blame my father for this. And I have to ask you though, that a couple of weeks ago when the when the Tigers played the Dodgers and they were losing nine to four in the bottom of the ninth. Oh. Did you see that? It was it was like because I, I said it was over, you know, and all of a sudden yeah. I look back and I'm going for a change, they're pulling victory out of the jaws of defeat. Yeah. But it was it's great. That's the one thing about baseball that's really good. It's there's no time limit. I mean, there there is yeah. time now, but you, you know, you got innings and you gotta you gotta score more runs. Everybody gets a chance, and you know, you gotta play the game out. So you, you never know. It's uh, yeah. and I've seen bigger things than that happen. So it's yeah. it was just it was fun to see that for a change. Because we like to, we're very Christian. Like we like to give, then we receive. Well, it's funny you mentioned the Dodgers because we got to talk about them, right? Like they they have a fairly big lead in the West. Um, clearly, the most talented team in the West too. Uh, but what do you what do they have to do to maintain the course and and keep things going in the right direction? And then also, Al, I'm going to ask you on top of that, um, what what do they need to do differently this year that they haven't done in the past besides obviously win a championship, but like, how do you go about doing that? Because it seems like this team just keeps coming up short when they're loaded from top to bottom. And this year there's, it's, it's like, you know, uh, it's like the cowboy syndrome, right? Super Bowl or bust. They've got to win the world series this year. So what's going to end up happening with, with this? Do you think they're going to be able to get it done? Well, right now, the things that concern me with the Dodgers are their starting rotation is just in shambles. Like, they, they just don't have anybody healthy. Yeah. Like, Yamamoto's on a 60-day IL. Bueller's yeah. on a 15-day IL. Uh, like, James Paxson, they just DFA'd. And that guy was 8-2 and two for some reason. And, like, their starting rotation is just a mess right now. Kershaw um, just came back, and he didn't last five innings. No, no, he didn't. Like, uh, that's that's the thing that really kind of worries me. Um, mm-hmm. Their bullpen is is fine, um, but they just don't have any. They don't, they just keep trotting out these rookies that like nobody's ever heard of, and like frankly, that kind of might do them in. Yeah, like unless all these rookies in October, mm-hmm. I, it, yeah. and if the Dodgers don't win the World Series this year, like people are getting fired. That's that's what I'm I'm looking at. Like, there's definitely someone losing their job, uh, and and a big big change because they've spent a lot of money. There's no excuse for not getting it done. The you know they the got right to way. trade Otani and Freeman, both of them, <laughs> to the Braves, <laughs> to Atlanta. No, they'll take um, send them to the Tigers for school. Bowl. Then I'll I'll accept that. No, they need to trade them to the Braves <laughs> for draft picks. And, uh, I'll take that. So. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, we'll pay Otani one million a year or whatever he's making. <laughs> like, hey, 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 it's two. It's okay. two million a year. Okay. All right, it's two million. All right. So la- last question we got on baseball here before we we transition over to football. Um, what is who's the the team that you see that's probably uh, like a bit of a dark horse coming through that you think could catch some steam here uh, coming through into the playoffs? Cleveland's a weird team of destiny this year. They really are. I don't know what they're doing. Stephen Kwan is is hitting like is hitting like Ichiro at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. I, like I, the dude, like the dude's hitting like three sixty, and you're like, what? Like they just have this weird team of destiny feel to it this year. That like, I think they. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just got that vibe from them. And it's kind of cool to see it uh, being a small market team too. I, I say small market. Cleveland's big, but it's not like New York. You know, Miami, L.A., one of those, right? Like it's it's a one team yeah. city. So, but what what do you think, Coach? Who do you have? I think, I think it's going to be Cleveland and Philadelphia in the World Series. I'll tell you that man, boy, for a great series. <sighs> That's just two cities that are just habitually just mad. Like, yeah. and somebody has to lose. Boy, that's whoa. Somebody has to, right? Yeah. All yeah, right. Legally. And- Anything else you want to mention about baseball before we move on here? No, I just want to say thank you guys. It was great doing this. This yeah. is this is fun. <laughs> yeah. We were very glad to have you and, and Pablo too. Yeah. Uh, we'll get uh, it. It will be great, and we'll see how the viewership goes up. Hold so. up just a second, Lynn, are you here? 
Oh, bring her in. Oh, her in. we bring in her you in. Gotta, too. You got to make an appearance yeah. here. Bring okay. Her in. Yeah. She's the she's the real here she comes. Here she comes. Ah, the there she okay. is. Ah, all right. Okay. So you guys take take care and have fun. Thank you. you. All right, guys. We are back with the NFL now, bringing you some NFL news. Uh, and it's just uh just the two of us again. So sorry for everyone that decided they're leaving now, but uh, for the rest of you that are staying, uh, we got some NFL stuff. So. Uh, big news in the NFL, Shaq Barrett and Michael Gallup both decide to retire. Uh, so, you know, they'll be missed, obviously, in Miami. And I believe Gallup was actually signed on with Vegas. He was, yeah. At the time. Yeah, I heard a lot of news stations incorrectly reporting that, that he was a, a cowboy and retiring. And I'm like, no, he played for the Cowboys. Yeah. Tore his ACL, never was really the same again, and then, you know, decided to retire. Shaq Barrett... Uh, stud uh, won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay. Uh, he actually yeah. started out in Denver initially and was yeah. quite good there, but they were just like, oh, yeah, we can't re sign him. We got Von Miller and Bradley Chubb and all these guys. It's like, oh, yeah, keeping those guys together, we just shouldn't do that, right? Yeah. So, because no, we're not Pittsburgh fun. or anything, right? Like, that yeah. makes no sense. So, anyhow, but uh, very happy for both of them. Wish them the best in this next journey of life that the rest of us are on. So yeah. <laughs> um, ESPN also released their top 25 players of the 21st century. And your boy. They sure did. Let's talk about that. Brady was let's on top. Okay. Well, let's be serious for a second. Look at the well, top five Brady. guys, right? It was Brady first, then Patrick Mahomes, then Aaron Donald, yeah, Peyton Manning, and then Randy Moss. So all of those guys are retired except for one. Yeah, Brady's at one right now, but there is a guy dangerously close on his heels. Um, dangerously close, he still needs four more Super Bowls. Okay, four more, but I guarantee if he wins two more, they say he's better, and especially if he wins one this year. So, uh, but we will see. We'll, we'll see, right? Um, I, I don't know. They started ranking athletes. And I don't think, uh, like, okay, so Tom Brady did very well, but he wasn't a good athlete. So it kind of bugs me when I hear, like, oh, yeah, let's yeah. rank the best athletes. And it's like, really? Is this guy an athlete? But Yeah, because if based on those five that you told the, we just read off, yeah, that one and two should have been, and you could pick the order, and I don't think it really matters, Aaron Donald and Randy Moss. Yeah, 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 they're freaks. And right. even every time I see clips of Randy Moss, I'm just like, oh. Like, he was so majestic the way he played the game. It was incredible. You knew Randy Moss was fast because when he was running, it never looked like he was running at full speed. Mm -hmm. But there but was yet, always five yards between him and the guy behind him. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, very interesting to see that. I was glad Manning was number four, but it just, uh, the thing that I really liked, and I feel like a lot of people don't do this because, uh, they want to put so much distance between Brady and Manning. Um, but I think it really put it in perspective just how good Manning was, right? Yeah. Like, and I, I think that's a really important thing to understand because, yeah, he didn't win seven Super Bowls. He only won two, but he still was an incredible player and elevated the level of his team much more than the next guys, right? Like there may be Tom Brady, 10 feet of shit, and then Peyton Manning. But there's another 20 feet of shit, and then yeah. the rest of the guys after that. So, um, you know, I, you I, know I, I think know. you know what I think a lot about with Peyton Manning, real quick. Yeah, how winning that last Super Bowl really helped his legacy. Yeah, because think, think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. If he just retires with just the one, I think a lot of things that are said about him are, man, he was one of the best, but boy, just kind of left a few out there that he could have had yeah I, having that second one really kind of cemented cemented that legacy for him that's i was so pissed when they won that year because i knew that like then you couldn't really say anything bad about peyton manning well you yeah could. and and the year that i don't even think that was his best year because the no. best year was when they played the seahawks and they got crushed in the super bowl and that was really really tough to watch yeah. um but i'm pretty sure i'm not the only peyton fan uh, that also thinks like he's got two Super Bowls that he won and two closet Super Bowls. Um, because 
I feel humor like the, me on what the two closet Super Bowls are. Okay, so the, the two closet Super Bowls humor for um, those academics out there uh, yeah. are Eli's Super Bowls that he won. <laughs> so I feel like he gets credit for that too, even though maybe he shouldn't. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I just, I when I think of Peyton, I think of four. Um, and that's how I get there. The two he won and the two Eli won. So it's a... Uh, if Tom Brady had a brother, you know, it's not our fault he didn't have a brother. So That's that's not how Super Bowl wins work. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But okay, I'm just saying, like, I, I can't be the only fan out there of, of Peyton that's like, yeah, but those almost felt like victories with the Giants beating the Patriots that year for, for maybe the whole league, right? Sure. All, all other 31 teams that felt like a victory. But Yeah, 2000, Super Bowl 42 for sure. Yeah. 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 But... I don't know. For him to do it and then go back and, and beat him again, I think that was quite impressive. But did you see the clip of them signing jerseys? Yeah. I, I sent that to you. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so for those that didn't see it, Brady, they asked him if he would sign a, a Eli Manning jersey. So he signed it, and he wrote F U on it or something, right? And mm -hmm. sent it over to Eli. And Eli didn't. He's like, well, what do I say back? And he signed it and wrote good game, <laughs> which it's like a power move. It was really kind is. of funny. So, really uh, well, spe speaking of power moves, right? Let's segue into this. Belichick, uh, it just got reported that he declined an opportunity uh, to come in. And basically, Kyle Shanahan told him, you can do whatever you want in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to ask, like, is it a big deal for you? Like, you know, I've mellowed on him a lot. Uh, yeah. But, I, I mean, I think he'd be an asset to any franchise. It doesn't matter which which one. Uh, may, maybe not New England anymore, but like, yeah, you know, he's already done enough there. But do, do you think like would that be something that people would be like, oh my god, he's he's this, or would he view that as a step back going from like overseer to understudy? So when I first heard this story, my initial reaction was like, boy, that's kind of like fucked up that he didn't take that job. Like, yeah. That's he gets to coach some really good defensive players. Yeah, could you imagine he if he had Nick Bosa? Yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Savage. Yeah, Savage. but the more that I, like, I sat and kind of thought about it, I, I part of me kind of landed on the... I think that he actually now, that he's had some time, I think he's content taking the year off. Listen, man. Like... I, I don't, and I don't want to be cruel about this, but... If you had a new 25-year-old girlfriend, maybe you'd take the year off, too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, I like, just... Yeah. Like, so I can't really fault him for that and be like, oh, yeah, like, bad belly, right? Like, he's been in the league every year since, like, 1976. Yeah. The dude just is probably tired and wants a year where, like, he can, I don't know, do things in the fall. Yeah, if if everything pans out the way we think it's going to, he'll be in Dallas next season. So also, here's the thing: is there's no like if next year rolls around, he could still do the San Francisco thing again if he really wants. Yeah, to. if he really wants to, I'll tell you that would yeah. make for a very dangerous team. Uh, that's already very dangerous, right? Yeah. Not to mention, like, think about the like he's had nothing to do with the offense, but to be around players like Christian McCaffrey and. You know, even someone like Debo, uh, Debo Samuel, Kittle, Ayuk, Purdy. Like, think about the knowledge he could impart on guys like that that haven't gotten yeah. it elsewhere, right? Um, yeah. I don't know. But a lot of holdouts going on via contracts right now, right? Like, you've Love got, see it. yeah, Hassan Reddick, who we, somewhere, maybe he's in Japan still. Uh, but yeah. Howie Roseman just looking like a G again, right? Trading it away a guy and. You know, they're not, then the Jets can deal with that. Yeah, in um, the nick of time. Yeah, you got Trent Williams too, which I, I don't think I'm that concerned about because he's Mr. Roadblock himself. Um, they're going to get him, his situation figured out in San Francisco. That's, guys, they're not letting the best left tackle in the game go without a contract. If he wants yeah. money, he's going to get paid and he's going to be in there blocking for his boy. So, um, I wouldn't worry about him. Ayuk is a more of an interesting situation because he's a hold in. So is Chase, though. You see, Jamar Chase was handing out towels to other receivers. Yeah. Camp. Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Jamar isn't the biggest G at Cincinnati Bengal camp, though. Uh, no. Because Joe no. Burrow showed up. And now, initially when you said it to me that, like, check out Joe Burrow's haircut, I didn't really know what to expect. And I thought, like, oh, he's just trying to be Slim Shady. Then yeah. I sent you the video today on the story of it that there was a kid that wrote to him and said that, like, he had lost his hair because he was going through cancer treatment. And so Joe decided to cut his hair to, like, in solidarity with the kid. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that the kid was a Ravens fan and, like, didn't have cancer, like, made it all up. So instead, Joe Burrow, Joe Cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, dyes his hair blonde, becomes Eminem, you know, 2.0, and, like, just handles his business as such. And I just think like the world can, could use more cool people like that. Can we, I just real quick, I, I've had some time to think about it ever since you sent, sent that to me. And here's the thing. One, that's incredibly fucked up. Uh, yeah. Let's just start there. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know how to start with that. Cause it's, it's really just, it's very classless. And I don't know where a kid gets an idea to do something like that. Two, if you're Joe Burrow, you don't, like, I just feel like like you have the money and the resources to figure out, like, if this is true or not before you just go and shave your head all willy-nilly. Like, that just seems like something you could have verified first. Yeah. Before you did it. He's still cool, though. Yeah. He's still no, he cool. Is, but, like, maybe there's a lesson learned in this and, like, Hey, maybe we just kind of dig around real quick to make sure this is really true. Like, yeah. uh, uh, you would think, right? But it just shows him wearing wearing his heart on his sleeve, trying to be a guy, right? Like, and and help kids Boy. out. He hears about a kid in need. He's gonna try to help him, right? Raven's um, really trying to inherit all that bad karma this year, huh? Yeah, cool. they're really trying to soak it up. Um, which imagine Burrow goes off and throws like seven touchdowns. Remember that that game opening? I hope he does. Opening um, opening day, like. What was it? A few few years ago, Manning ended up throwing seven touchdowns against the Ravens. It was yeah. awesome. Such a great night. Um, and literally unbelievable watching it happen live. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's dive into the NFL that we've got here because uh, we've got the last breakdowns, AFC West and NFC West. So we're going to kind of fly through these a little bit. Chargers finished at 5-12 and 12 last year, which was good enough for fourth in the division. Just not a great year for them at all. Injuries really took their toll. But you're, uh, and this is a, kind of a somber moment because sure. Al's favorite coach <laughs> yeah. uh, in any sport was fired. Uh, and I think it sent you into like a depression spiral. Um, you like started calling his name walking around the house and like i did yeah uh so brandon just, staley he was fired yeah. yeah um justin herbert played hurt which he's like a tough sob right uh keenan allen had a great year but he you know then kind of got hurt at, at the end um but i just i don't know like as i look through the schedule and the games that they won and lost like every game they won i uh, every game they they um lost every i expected them to lose those games to those teams yeah. so it just i don't know this year like new look right john harbaugh's back i'm sorry jim harbaugh's back in the league right one of them yep one of one of them uh you know one of the ones that was in the super bowl so and the, the one that doesn't have lamar jackson right yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah yeah that one so uh or the one whose mission it is to not defend Lamar Jackson, right? So, uh, but they draft Joe Alt, who is a big boy uh, for uh, for a tackle. So I think he's going to be awesome this year. But they're really showing their commitment to the run. Um, not a lot of flashy names on this roster this year. But no. definitely is a roster that I think will perform better than people anticipate um and i think a lot of that comes with the culture change with jim harbaugh there so let me just ask real quick what what are your thoughts on this team um yeah i, I think that getting rid of uh brandon staley is addition by subtraction immediately like that probably will give you a couple extra at least two extra wins this year um yeah i i think that this team 
I, I think they're going to play a lot of gritty smash mouth football. And I think you're going to see a lot of games with them that end in like 17, 14, 20 to 17. Like you're just going to see a lot of that. Yeah. And I would like to see Herbert stay healthy because Herbert's starting to develop the rap that like, he's kind of a guy that like plays through a lot of injuries and gets hurt. Mm-hmm. And like, I would just like to see him be healthy for a year. And yeah, what when, like. when he was healthy, he was putting up like Mahomes S numbers. Yeah. Right? Like he, he, he's a stud. Like that kid knows how to sling it and he could th- make every throw on the field. Um, but I just feel like the same way of what you were saying, right? If he doesn't shake this injury bug type thing, uh, we could be looking at a guy that injuries kind of follow him around and we're never going to get to see that he's going to get lost in the shuffle behind all the other quarterbacks that are rising up now. It's um, this, ge- like, if he's not careful, this is, he's going to be this generation's Phil Rivers, who ironically yeah. also played for the Chargers. Yeah, I know. All right, well, moving on, we had the Broncos, right? Finished at 8 and 9. That was third in the division. I think it's safe to say the Russell Wilson, Sean Payton experiment did not work out. Um, not working as intended, right? Uh, yeah. But I do have to say that, like, I don't think Russell played awful last year. I know a lot of people think he did, but I encourage you to go back and actually watch some of the snaps that he, some of the throws he was making. Watch that Houston game. Now, like, I don't know. I feel like the Broncos were really bad last year initially, right? But I went back and started looking at this. Like we remember when Miami dropped a 70 burger on them. It was yep. it was ugly and everyone was like, "Oh, clearly this is the worst team in the league." Right? Like worst team in the league hands down right here. But listen to the games that they won in a row last year. I just want to mention that these games they won in a row. Yep. Green Bay Kansas City, Buffalo, Minnesota, Cleveland. The next week, they narrowly lost at the end to Houston. So, like, this wasn't an awful team. Minus Minnesota, those are all playoff teams. Yeah. And, like, Minnesota, you could have argued, was, like, at times we were talking about them as if, like, oh, man, if they figure it out with Dobbs here, like, they got a shot at still making the playoffs. Yeah. Right? Like, playoffs but now i just playoffs? like they they blow all of it up right they get rid of russell wilson they're paying for it uh Corbin yeah, Sutton, sure are. yeah he was holding out for a new deal there they bumped in some incentives for him and stuff but like they draft bo nix sean payton's guy now right like and and you just kind of know that like this is sean payton's team now right uh, and i yeah. just i just wanted to ask you like what do you see for this team going forward I think this is a step back year because their quarterback options, if it, if they're not going to start Bo Nix, mm-hmm. is Zach Wilson. Yeah. That can't, like... He's too busy dating moms in the Denver area. Yeah. Like, he can't, like, that can't... <laughs> you're trying to tell me that quarterback combination is going to replace the eight wins from last year? I just don't see it. Like, somebody has to come in last in this division. I think it's... Actually, no, the Raiders are going to be really bad, too. Scratch that. Oh, boy. Oh, we're going to talk about them in a second. Yeah, I, I think I, I think you look at a guy like Patrick Sertan, and he becomes a very viable trade asset. You yeah. know, if we're looking at this team, and they're one in six, you know, going into week seven, they're, he's going to get moved, man. Like, it's going to happen. Um, yeah. I, and I hope not, because, like, Denver needs to build around something. And, yeah. like, he's their best player. Mm-hmm. And Bo like, Nix, we've heard about for years, right? Like, uh, even yeah. in high school, like, hopefully he's the most, he's, <laughs> he, I think I, I they said a statistic the other day that, like, he's taken more college snaps than, like, the the first round of quarterbacks last year in all of college. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if that, that, that was exactly it, so, don't, you know, don't shoot me, but, uh, or don't sue me. Right. But uh, it, he's, he's had a lot of experience in college. Hopefully a little bit of that will spill over into the pros for him. But yeah, uh, speaking of the team you said is, is going to be bad as well. We may disagree on this, but the, the Vegas Raiders, right? They finished at eight and nine, which was second in the division. Um, but just for a second, can we please bring up receiver and talk I'm about glad, it? I'm glad that we are because I, what I'm going to say, you're going to just, you're going to think it's kind of wild. I, as somebody that watched receiver 
there's something missing to it. And, and the same, I felt the same way with quarterback as well. Mm-hmm. There's something missing with that show that like, they don't do that hard knocks does. And I can't figure out really what it is because I love hard knocks and it's the same show going like in, in inside, like, you know, like people's lives in the NFL. And I think for me, the thing is with receiver is like, they just kind of show, like they just keep showing clips of everybody's life. And like, there's no narration to it a lot of the time. Right. Which, which whereas, could definitely give more context to it. Whereas hard, because like, I find that in episodes of Receiver, like I was just getting bored at points. And I was like, and I'd stop paying attention. And whereas like Hard Knocks. I did every feel three, that with Receiver too. I did. Yeah. And whereas Hard Knocks, like I just <laughs> finished watching the most recent episode of, of the off season with the Giants. And like Lee Schreiber is narrating that thing every three to four minutes. Yeah. Like, you always know what's going on. It feels a lot music better. Is better. And I, mm-hmm. I just, I like where Netflix is going with it. I just, I think they're, they could, it could be better. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely could be. Um, I, I just, the reason I wanted to bring it up and I, I enjoy it for what it is. Right. I think there's mm-hmm. things that could yeah. be better in it. I, I, I like, I didn't really consider that, but I think it's good. Um, what you brought up because I, I haven't personally watched the hard knocks one. I just see the clips from it, but I, I really think that, uh, receiver's good, but I felt like there was a little something that needed to be tweaked on it. The reason I brought it up was because I think it gives a lot of context on how this team's season went last year, um, especially with Devontae Adams, right? Like, you yeah. get to see... We're sitting there as fans watching it being like, hey, something wrong here. And then you get to see him in the show being like, hey, guys, this is wrong. Like something's they, wrong here. Yeah, something's yeah. wrong here. It's not working. This is broken. I need to we need to get this figured out. Now, if you had told me last year that he was going to end up on the Jets, I would have believed you, but I don't believe it now. Um now yeah. Vegas starts out 1 and 7, maybe. Maybe uh he could, but they've openly said like he's openly come out and said I love Antonio Pierce. I love what he brings to this team. Antonio Pierce lets him know that he's a big part of the team, which he knows that anyways. But I also like seeing the other guys in the show, like Austin Hooper coming up to him and saying like, dude, we know how good you are. You keep being yeah. the leader that we know you're capable of being. Keep doing your thing. We know like there's nothing you can do about the missed throws, like bad throws that end up in picks. Like, And it's just frustrating for him because he was playing with one of the best quarterbacks ever and then goes into this situation. But yeah. This team, you know, Josh McDaniels gets fired. Obviously, Pierce takes over. Uh, Crosby and Devontae, they just they seem to not only be leaders on the team, but very much behind him. Um, the team didn't have a dramatic resurgence after Pierce took over, but they played marginally better. And I really think... Yeah. I really think as well that the players believed in him more than they believed in McDaniels. Um, I think and, the Raiders learned from their lesson a couple of years ago when Gruden got fired and uh, the guy they brought in who was their like special teams coach, mm-hmm. Rich, uh, I, I can't. Yeah, Stasia? St- was that it? Yeah. And like they like went on a run with him and then they didn't retain him after and they yeah. hired Josh McDaniels. And I think this time they, they saw it was kind of happening again. Mm-hmm. And I think they learned their lesson this time around. I really hope they did, man, because I, I feel like he's – even if he's too, it's too soon for him to be an NFL coach. I feel like he's handled it very well, and his attitude, his mindset, all of that. Like, don't forget, I know you know him. He he was the the linebacker for the Giants. Don't the I know Super it. Bowls? Yeah, like he was he was fierce, man. Um, really was. But this team, they add on defense Christian Wilkins, which and the reason yeah. I want I wanted, I want to mention that Ooh. is because that's not a low key signing. That is oh. a very big signing in this division where you need guys that are going to get after the quarterback and you also need to weaken teams within your conference. And that's exactly what they did to Miami. So I just think this defensive line is going to be scary with him and Crosby lining up. Um, I don't know who you double team, man. And Crosby is a much better player than I've wanted to admit. Much better. Yeah. 
Yeah, I you weirdly in receiver, like the, a lot of the Raider stuff, like just him and Crosby are best friends. Yeah. Like you kind of like they're dressing the same before yeah. the games. It's kind of funny yeah. to see. I think that was like my biggest takeaway from the from the Devontae Adams piece of receiver is that like I sometimes forget that Max Crosby is a really good fucking player. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I just love it. Like when you interview both of them, like he, he, you're asking Max stuff and he's like Oh yeah, we're the same dude. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's like, okay. it's so funny how chill he is. And Max Crosby, what a story he has of getting his life together and like really yeah. just turning it turning it a full one eighty, right? Um, and they're gonna need to to really be on this year because the team at the top of the division, the Chiefs, man, uh, not only did they win the division, we know that they're the Super Bowl champs, right? Um, we, yeah. We've talked about how great they are. We don't really need to recap that. I think the biggest pieces that need to be said about this team, obviously Mahomes is there. Yeah, Kelsey's coming back. They added some receivers in. They drafted some guys. They've got Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo. Yeah. And that makes a big difference having that continuity to come through. Uh, I think they're going to be awesome again next year. I I, th- I agree with you. I, I agree with you on half of that. I agree with you that, like, having somebody like Patrick Mahomes guarantees you 11 to 12 wins every year. Yep. Just pencil it in. What does concern me is a lot of off-field stuff this offseason that yeah. I'm not loving. And, like, some kind of, like, really heinous stuff, too, from some of their guys that, like, it's i i know they have the talent but i it's just something that to, to kind of keep an eye out for to be a little concerned about yeah and it's and it's already starting in practice you saw that they got to, uh tony got into a fight in practice um was it tony he, yeah i think he was the guy who threw the football at the db's head after he got like laid out and uh yeah just little stuff like that adds up yeah and i just I feel like this has kind of been simmering for a long time. And I, I, my fear is the pressure of trying to be the first team to win three Super Bowls in a row is going to really get to them. I, I don't think it's going to get to Mahomes. I don't think it's going to get to Kelsey. But I think a lot of those other guys, I think it's going to get to. Yeah. And like I, Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo are the guys you want if you want to like steady that ship. They got to be the I glue, just, man. And I, I just don't know if that's enough. Yeah, I just don't know if that's enough with everything that's going on with that team. Well, so. we're we're gonna be able to talk more about them before we come, you know, for the season here with our picks and stuff. But uh, yeah. let's uh, let's touch on the NFC West before we get out of here. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, they were dog shit last year. <laughs> sure were. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. I I'm sorry for the language, but like really, like it was it was bad, right? Like Kyler Murray's back; he's fully healed now. Um, I know that you you're still skeptical on him, but. You know, they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. They say goodbye to, to Marquise Brown, so he's out. Um, and they just, listen, they've got a decent running game. We saw they beat Dallas last year, right? Uh, but they've got a decent running game behind, with Connor. They drafted Trey Benson out of Florida State, who's a, a just a powerful guy. Like, And I think likely he's going to take over by the end of the season, but Connor's not going to make it easy for him. Um, yeah. I think Jonathan Gannon, besides all his quirkiness and stuff, has really turned this team a bit. They're bringing in – the GM obviously knows what he's doing. They're yeah. on the same page and bringing the right guys in. They add Zay Jones to the wide receiver room. I think that's awesome. He's a good player. Trey McBride's a stud at the tight end position. Like, they have playmakers, but it's like, does the offensive line hold up? And how good is yeah. this defense going to be? You and I talked a lot about this last year. For a mm-hmm. team that was four and thirteen, they were they played hard every week, which is really I, tough to ask too, right? That is because and when that, you're bad, it's very difficult when you get your teeth kicked in every week yep. for the coach to come in and be like, "Hey, yep, let's get at it, guys. Let's have a great week of practice and get back out there and give our best." It's like, dude, we just got our butts kicked by forty points. Like and that's and that's Gannon setting the culture. That's, yeah, that's exactly what yep. that is. And yep. like I, that's why I think Arizona, I think is going to do pretty. I think they're going to do all right this year. I think Marvin Harrison is going to come in and immediately dominate this league. So get ready for that. 
Like I just, uh, as I think of Jonathan Gannon and what he's trying to do there, and especially bringing in a young guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., it reminds me a lot of Moneyball with Brad Pitt. And he yeah. needs to do his best Brad Pitt impersonation, right? Going in there and being like, guys, it's a process. It's a process, right? Like getting them to understand they're not going to win 15 games this year. No. They're not going to do it. Not in this division. But they may be able to win seven or eight, yep. you know? And and maybe surprise a few people. Maybe they finish better than Seattle. I don't think so, but maybe, right? Yeah. Um So, which, con- you know, conveniently, Seattle's the next team, right? Nine and eight last year. They finished third in the division. Ton of injuries on this team, really. Like, especially on offensive line. Um, also seemed like some underutilization of JSN. I don't know why you draft a guy if you're not going to use him at all. I agree. Because um, he was really, really good in college. And really, really just not used the way you would have thought he would have been used. Tyler Lockett, I think, has taken a step back. But this team's got some got some power to it, right? M- Mike McDonald comes in as the new head coach. Pete Carroll gone, right? But, I'm really ex- I'm really excited about that head coaching hire. That I think was my favorite one of the offseason. Mike McDonald, really? Yeah, I really Wow, he, okay. He did a lot of really good things with that Baltimore defense. Yeah, very good. And I think that he's just going to bring over that culture to a team that already preaches defense. Mm-hmm. And I really I really like that. The, I, really I think like he's going to be very good for their defensive backfield because they've got a lot of really good corners oh, there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think they could, could be very good there, but you know, he's also walking in with some playmakers. You got Ken Walker, uh, junior, the third, uh, you know, he's a, just a, a really good running back. Yeah. He's, he gets banged up. He gets hurt, but that guy know, has a nose for the end zone and he gets better. Same way it was at Michigan, right? When he ran the ball, uh, Michigan state, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Same way it was at Michigan state. The more carries he gets, the better he gets. He's kind of like that Derrick Henry S type guy. Um, Not like a Tony Pollard and stuff where, you know, 13 carries is a sweet spot. This guy, give me 30 and I'll I'll get you some production. Uh, And plus you got DK Metcalf, who's the biggest human being I know that runs the fastest and catches uh, an oval shaped ball that way uh, that I know. I don't understand how when there's a DB lining up against Metcalf and they're like, if that were me, I'd be like, you know what? This game isn't for me anymore. Well, like, yeah, but I, they want to fight him, dude. You see Marshawn Lattimore go at him and, like, grab his face mask, and he's just looking at him like, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Try to well, throw Lattimore's him around like a rag doll. Yeah, he Lattimore's is. nuts. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but DK not, is a – dude, and anymore. he he even talked about his diet and stuff. He's ripped, unlike many yeah. – uh, like, there's very few people that are built that way, and he's like, oh, yeah, I eat, like, two, three bags of candy a day. Yeah, I, I just I never understand when people actually tackle them. I'm like, oh, I wonder how much strength that requires because it seems like that's a lot. Yeah, if you can catch him. Yeah. Um, yeah. and he gets a lot of red zone targets too. Uh, yeah. So I, I really I think this team takes a step forward this year, but someone's got to take a step back, and that's that's the hard part of figuring out. Maybe at first year in the team, it's going to take a little bit, right? Um, well, I, I think too, a lot of this hinges on Gino this year. I knew you were going to bring him up. It yeah. Does. So like it does, it does, but he played well the year before he actually led the league in completion percentage. So yeah. he's not bad. He just needs to make good decisions. Right. Um, yeah, he came back down to earth last year and I, yeah. I think that definitely cost him in a couple of games and I, yeah. If Seattle wants to get back to the playoffs, Gino has to go back to the way he played in 2022. Well, they also, part of it wasn't his fault, right? They're playing musical chairs on the offensive line with everyone that yeah. was hurt. So they and really. He, and Gino got hurt too. Yeah. And don't, don't forget yeah. two years ago, they had uh, the tackles that they drafted were uh, both first round guys. I'm yeah. pretty sure first and second round. And then those are their bookends. So I don't know. We'll see. But. Then you've got the Rams, right? Uh, the Rams finished at 10 and 7, second in the division. They lost to Detroit in Detroit. Uh, homecoming for Matt Stafford and stuff. But really, like, the main story of the year was Cooper Cup's hamstring and the emergence of, I wrote emergency autocorrect. I, I saw that. that. I was like, I I'm it in there. So, yeah, emergence of Puka Nakua, um, who just, like, he was fantastic to watch last year. He really yeah. was like, I don't know how someone could dislike this guy. He's a freak, man. He, and, he is so good at catching the ball and making ridiculous catches. 
And uh, Puka Nakua has talked a lot about this offseason that he finally, like, somebody sat down with him and was like, hey, like, you're really good, but, like, if you just, like, put better food into your body, how much better, and better training. And he yeah. spent, he has spent this off season training with Cooper cup. Yeah. And I think you're going to really see the results of that. This Dude, year. So Cooper cup, they actually interesting story about him is like, he used to try to get into lifting competitions with Aaron Donald. And Why? Like, <laughs> well, because he's, he's that strong. Like he was, he was able to compete on certain things with him. Now, probably not squatting the same, Right. No. But like even Aaron Donald came out and was like, yo, this guy's a dog. Like he is super strong, very fit, and he's not afraid of competition. So like I don't know. I think Cooper Cup's gonna have a great bounce back year this year. And I think Puka Naku is gonna have a great year as well. Um yeah. really for me, it's like Kyron Williams, right? The emergence of him too, right? If he's yeah. able to stay healthy, this team the sky could be the limit, right? We could be looking at this team instead of San Francisco, especially with some of the problems that are kind of going on in San Francisco right now. Um, well, I think with the Rams, a big thing is like Stafford has to stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. It, it it hinges on that because they don't have someone behind it. I know they got Garoppolo, but it's not the same. Uh, Stafford is unbelievable. But I just think I want to give a little shout out to McVay and Raheem Morris for what they were able to do. Like Raheem Morris obviously earned his – her spot as a head coach, but um, you know, they ended the season with four wins on a four game win streak, yeah. uh, which is kind of interesting because they finished at 10 and seven. So they were six and seven before that. So the and they last... needed every one of those wins to get to the playoffs. Yeah. So every the last of... month of the season, they really turned it on. Um, it, it just, I don't know, kind of crazy. Obviously Aaron Donald retires. You got your top cornerback, right? Darian Kendrick that just went down today. They fear it's probably a torn ACL, which it's really a rough way to start training camp because this is a kid that yeah. was on the rise. Uh, but this is a team that I think is still going to give headaches to San Francisco in this division. Um, I really believe it. So, yeah. Um, then we've got right. San Francisco 49ers, right? 12 and five first in the division, obviously, but uh, first in the conference too, but lost in the Super Bowl. So uh, the same question that existed last year is going to exist this year. Can Purdy do it? And it kind of bugs me now because now there's a much larger sample size, a full season, and where he played not just kind of well in the playoffs, he played extremely well in the playoffs. And especially, too, because the expectation for San Francisco was to get to the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, but and he shouldered those expectations. Yeah, and still and he, made it. Yep. And, yep. like, you look at the comeback that he led in de- that game against Detroit, yeah. I mean, I couldn't be happier for the guy. No matter what success comes his way, I won't ever look bad about on him because I just feel like he deserves every good thing that comes his way. Well, also too, that Green Bay game the week before, he like he drove he led them back from a comeback on that as well. Like, ah, he, that's right. That's like right. he like he's for me that's not a question anymore. Well, like with with Purdy. Don't forget to Yeah, me neither. Uh d- don't forget too that Mahomes had to drive down in overtime to win the Super Bowl. Yep. So it's like, I, I don't know. The people that are still questioning him, it just kind of bugs me. Like, Yeah. I, uh, I, the things that do worry me with this team is some of the things we talked about with the Chiefs earlier, there just seems to be a lot of off-the-field noise and a lot of players just not happy right now. And yeah. I feel like you could have one guy – that's not happy, but when you start having multiple guys that aren't happy for money reasons, mm-hmm. that I think throws off the chemistry, and I definitely that that worries me a little bit. I think Trent Williams, they're going to figure that out because he's Trent Williams, and you don't have a better option. And him and Debo lead the team out with the yeah. big speaker, like you need him there. Yeah. So uh, Ayuk is more of a that worries me a little more, and I. Because he, Ayuk would be a one on any other team. He just plays for the 49ers. On quite a few other teams. I would say probably 20 other teams he'd be a one. But okay. there's there's a good, maybe not, maybe more than 20. But I don't know. There's at least 10 receivers in the league that I like better than him being oh, a number sure. one. But his metrics last year were off the chart. Yeah. Yeah. He's and very efficient. That, mm-hmm. And that's kind of what happens when you get to play with Debo and George Kittle. Like that's and 
and the guy who's like closer to God than anybody, Christian McCaffrey. Like, yeah. if there's yeah. one person that I'm like, ah, oh, this is the best player in the NFL, I'm like, well, Tim. <laughs> you know, real quick with the receiver, the one thing that didn't surprise me at all is that George Kittle's a bunch of fun to hang out with. Oh, my God. It, okay, so I'm so glad. He was you... the MVP of that yeah. series for me. I am so and glad you brought that up. I haven't finished yeah. all of it, but the thing that I, I don't know, was really moving for me, because I think he's an awesome guy that I like to learn more about, but that his wife said that he was the most positive person in every situation. And I think that's so important. Like yeah. even seeing him out on the field, like him running up to the ref and being like, it's such a nice day out. Can you believe we get to play football today? Yeah. I'm like, what? Like the, he's yeah. a kid. I, he's a I'll kid, tell you man. what though, the end, you're going to get to the end with the Super Bowl episode. And boy, that's, you think that was rough to watch in real time? Like it's rough hearing guys like mic'd up and like what they went through at the end yeah, I, and how I, heartbroken they were. Like that's that was really hard to watch. Yeah, because he's been close a few times. Like they've shown him in receiver being yep. close a few times, like the last few years. So yeah, yep. I, I think I've got two episodes left. So we'll we'll see how it works out. But um, yeah. yeah, let me just ask before we wrap up here: like, how does that team get over the hump? Because they did just about, just like the Eagles, you could say, right? The Eagles yeah. did everything right in that Super Bowl. They just, there was a guy on the other side that did things right and had one more time than they did. You know what they need to do? They need to ensure that Patrick Mahomes doesn't make it to the Super Bowl. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Because every other team in the league, they could be hands down. Yeah. it's that's That's the guy they can't beat. And like, Sometimes, like that's what that's what they're going to need to win a Super Bowl. I think they yeah. they can't face Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. They just can't. Like, definitely can't. Yeah. Well, I think that concludes it for NFL coverage for us. Now we've gone through all thirty-two teams in terms of their season, kind of a look back. We've talked a little bit about it and uh, and gone through that. Um, anything else you want to mention about football before we wrap up here? Nah, uh, you know, training camp's going on as we speak. Uh, yes, preseason games will be uh, starting up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I think the Hall of Fame game's like a week or change, we can change away. Uh, that's That to me is the, the, the official start. Once we get a preseason game in there, that Hall of Fame game, it's we're off to the races. And I can't I, wait. Yeah, me neither. Um, real quick, I'd like to uh, formally announce that uh, – I'm going to win our guillotine league this year. And, uh, <laughs> and John, if you're listening, you suck at drafting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to say about leadership skills? Not a great leader. Not okay. a great leader. All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll make sure he finds out. He'll have yeah. a response. Maybe he can come on as a guest one time, but uh, I hope so. Trivia question that we've got. Um, we had uh, what four teams in the NFL do not have an actual mascot. Yeah, that was the one. Did mm -hmm. uh, well, we had I, yeah, yep. Because it was a, we we already went through Drew Bledsoe last time. So, um, for this one, there's four teams in the NFL that don't have a natural mascot. You want to give them to them, or you know what they are? Yeah. So it is the uh, the Packers, the Chargers, the Giants, and the Jets. How how lame that it's both New York teams. Yeah, yeah. Fireman Ed doesn't count. Fireman that stinks count. fuck that guy yeah that yeah i don't like that guy either so um i don't really have a reason other than i just see him in the I, he's in the cold super bowl dvd yeah no <laughs> I, I i the only reason i have is i hate the jets so oh yeah well that, that's that a good helps, enough so. reason. Like... um all right so let's hold off on a trivia and uh, next next episode we yeah. can do another one uh we'll get through unless you had one you no no, okay. no that's okay right. we'll, uh... um before we wrap up we just wanted to, to thank everyone for, for tuning in today. Obviously, we had some special guests and stuff, so thank you for bearing with us on that. Uh, but one thing I did want to mention before we bounce out, um, one of both of our friends uh, that we went to high school with, uh, Jeff Broder, he actually is in the, uh, may have some big things coming his way. He's a, a fitness trainer, but more of like a... How how would you describe it? I I I feel like a fitness trainer isn't enough. Uh, strength I, the strength and strength conditioning and conditioning coach. coach yeah. Yes. 
Um, and yeah. he may have some big opportunities coming his way soon. Don't want to say anything on that to jinx it or anything, but we just wish him the best of luck, and we're super yeah. proud of him as a guy. We love that guy. So Yeah, overall, uh, good dude. Also, overall, dude, you just never want to mess with because he will pick you up over his head. Yeah, he was an, yeah. A, an incredible wrestler for a, a long time for yeah. us. So, um, But, again, uh, yeah, we wrapped up 49. We will be back for our next episode next week. Number 50. Is it going to be next week? No, uh, maybe two weeks. Yeah. Maybe next week. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. We'll We're going to figure it out. So, But, but we are going to be back 50th. with you. Yeah, it's going to be. AARP episode. Yes, Whoa. it's going to be 50. So we just yeah. want to thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate all the support, all the love. I uh, hope you guys are doing well out there and stay safe. Let's get ready for some football season, baby. Yes, sir. All right. Take care, Al. Love you, bro. Peace. Peace.